It allows them to forget. It allows them to be in a state of ghafla, you know, the, the state of heedlessness. Mm-hmm. So, so um, that, I think that's, that's why. Do you think I, people really want that though? To be in that state, or they just don't know how to, you know, find the truth? So does it make more make sense? It's a it's a mixture of both. Um, I think depending on the, on the unique circumstance uh, unique circumstances of an individual. So uh, some people have pains, they, uh, um, like deep emotional pains that they try to hide. So they hide it through, uh, or they cover it up, like even by consuming drugs, by consuming alcohol. You know, it allows them to forget it a little for a little while. It allows them to feel good for a little while. Really don't you feel like it feels so much better when you like release that? Like, I'm talking about it. Like, this is what I'm going through, you know? So, it, it depends on if a person is really, I think it depends on if a person really is, uh, um, you know, having a, a self, that self awareness. So, um, as someone who is self aware and they're aware of their, their issues, then, you know, they, they want to have some ways to release those issues. Um, but again, there are others, and it's mentioned in the Quran. And I think it's your human experience that there are others who who would just fool themselves, um, you know, who have created, who create justifications, who don't understand the harm they do. As the Quran says, They don't perceive that what they did. They don't perceive the they don't perceive the level of, of or the consequences of their thinking or the consequences of their of their actions. So, so they're not conscious of their They're not conscious. They're not they're not conscious. Uh, they have found ways I mean you see it in the political realm, but but more so I think is seen in interpersonal uh, realm. That we, that you know, we don't know what we do. Um, we don't we don't understand the consequences of what we do. Unless we have a deep recognition of self, and that we want to have that recognition of self. How would we get to that level? Sorry? How would we get to that level? So, in the Quran, um, it has a lot of ways. Um, one of the most important ways, I shouldn't say ironically, but one of the most important ways is prayer. In the Salat, Tanha an al Fahshai wal Munkari. That prayer, it restrains a person from morality. So what does that mean? It means that when we are connected to Allah and we're saying the words of Allah, we're saying Allahu Akbar and these things, that what it's doing is, is that it is sort of making us um, be conscious of His presence. And that consciousness allows us to kind of pause for a moment. Is that the right action or is that not the right action? Is that going to bring benefit or is that going to bring really benefit? So when a person prays with consciousness, um, then and they're doing it regularly, then it 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 uh, it has an impact on the mind. This is why it's like prayer is uh, so uh, so important. So prayer actually helps in the development of, of the person of, the, of that kind of um, inner reality. Allow them to, rec- to try to rec- be in a position to better recognize their their inner their inner realities. There's a hadith. Um, it's I don't know. That, I believe it's a weak hadith, but it's quoted a lot. Man arafa nafsahu arafa rabbihi. You know, I might have inverted the sequence, but the person who knows himself knows his Lord, or the or the person who knows his uh, Lord knows himself. So. However, the sequence is because I might have mixed up the sequence, but you know, so that's essentially that uh, you know a person who is really connected to God, you know that they know God, they are an art of billah, that they are someone who really, uh, uh, really seeks to know God. That that know that having that that cogn- that cognizance, uh, uh, the cognition of of Allah, that um, it allows them to to look at themselves and to put themselves in ever positions of growth. So this is why the Sahaba, if you read the Hadith literature, the Sahaba, they were afraid of being hypocrites. 
And, you know, it said that Sayyidina Umar came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, am I a hypocrite? He wants to know. <laughs> you know, so, be, be, you know, because there's this, this cognition there that he's, uh, that he has. You know, and I think all the Sahaba, the, the famous ones at least that we read about are, are the same way. In the same way. So, um, again, prophets, you know, if you look at the biographies of prophets, uh, they, they really, um, they were able to bring out this, this, uh, uh, the, they were really able to address those things, you know, the, the, the things for the development of the soul and, and and uh, the recognition of what the self is. But, um, um, you know, then it, when it becomes organized religion, then, you know, sometimes you kind of lose the, lose the, um, lose the impact of the, of the message of the prophet. That's why I say the prophet, he was like, like no matter what person he was with, he was so present with people. Yeah. Like no matter what they was going through, because he knew everybody was going through. Yeah. You know, something different. Yeah. And then he, in the hadith literature, he he says different things to different people, because yeah. not everybody has the same problem, you know, or the same dynamics. You know, everyone is unique, and so he has a he has a, the ability to sort of address everybody at their unique uh, at their unique level or their unique status. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, any other thoughts or question? So again, referencing, and so the hadith talks about that. Um, so in the hadith, the Prophet says, um, um, many hadiths, I mean, there's, there's one of them that's escaping me right now, but, um, uh, you know, the, the, those are the stories in, in the Bukhari and Muslim that there was a man who did some sin, came to the Prophet, the Prophet kept ignoring him. And then uh, time for prayer came, and it said the hadith says a man, the man prayed with the Prophet. And then uh, afterwards, he cornered the Prophet and said, Hey, you know, I committed the sin. And the Prophet said the words I mentioned, that God has forgiven you of your sin. So, meaning that because he prayed, you know, that, that the prayer itself lifted, as you said, it lifted up that burden. On him, but maybe the man didn't necessarily recognize it. The prophet recognized it. I mean, even if the man did not, the prophet recognized it. Because he's seen his probably sincerity. So, so I mean, the prophet knows what the value of prayer, yeah. and so he tells us that. You know, and that was one of those sort of teachable moments. You know, that, that and and it's again, it's um, it's beautiful. Allah, it's a really beautiful, um, a, a beautiful thing. You know, having prayer every day. As the Prophet said, another hadith, you know, that he talks about the uh, the water. If a person bathes every day, he will never be dirty. So that's the value of the uh, that's the value of the uh, of the prayers. Now I think also like dhikr of like memory. Yes. That's like, so do you mean like dhikr is in the ritual sense with the fingers or with the beads? No, it's not what I thought the day. Yeah, yeah. Where, where you were laying down, driving. Yeah. So this is something that's recognized in in modern um, modern psychology and and, and uh, modern therapy, etc. So um, so like the athkar um, that sometimes that we often quote. Uh, so the athkar, or you can say, um, um, I'm sorry, what's the expression? How's the expression go? Um, um, the words, there, there are words that give, the words that are meant to give strength to, to the person who is reciting them, you know. Um, they're like food for a while. Yeah, yeah, and, and they're powerful, yeah, yeah. you know. So, so again, it's like the word la ilaha illallah, like nothing exists, like all your thoughts, whatever you go through, yeah, this dunya, like yeah. I know 
almost easier said than done for a yeah. long enough long journey. I'm like, come on, like, I can't even take a step of all that's it. Whatever, nothing, nothing matters, you know? Like, it just, this garbage is just so long. Yeah. You know? So it is the people of the Sawaf, they have a, a, a particular dhikr. It's not in the Quran or Hadith, but it's actually, but your wording reminded me, La mawjuda illallah, or La mawjuda ghayrullah. I think you understand the words, that nothing is here or present except God. I mean, it's not in Hadith or an ayah, but you know, that's one of the words that, uh, that the people of the Sawaf, that they, uh, that they would, would tend to uh, recite. So, La ilaha illallah. My God, this is such a powerful statement because yeah. it says that it, that uh, there has never been, nor and nor, nor will there ever be any to be worshipped except Allah. Right. You know, and the Prophet said in Hadith that after the Allah, this is the best type of dhikr, is reciting that uh, reciting that uh, statement. Mashallah. Yeah. Okay. Barakallahu feekum.